Welcome to Fiction Narratives. Chapter 121, Paris, Raiden vs Ulysses. Paris, was completely quiet, naturally so, since the entire city was almost completely evacuated, there was a resounding beauty to such a wonderful city, being empty, alas, it wasn't completely empty, two figures clashed creating sounds of energy and explosions that resounded all around the capital. Neil Queen, his body flowing with the energy he had absorbed, faced off against Raiden, this time however, he was different, he was divine, complete, and perfect all words that could be used to describe his current form, it was imposing and otherworldly, with green hair flowing like leaves in the wind and eyes that mirrored the very earth from which he was formed, Raiden's physique was powerful yet graceful, every muscle sculpted with divine precision, this was his Inkija form. I am honored to be in the presence of one chosen by Mother Gaia herself Inkija's words resounded in Raiden's head, pure and pristine, hearing them gave one a sense of relaxation and ease me too, I do not know you perfectly, but I can sense long kinship towards you, let's us end this battle together. As you wish, my dear king spoke Inkiju, as Raiden took on a battle stance, inviting his enemy over, this is indeed a new form I haven't studied. But it matters not. I studied you perfectly, I know you inside and out Neil lunged at Inkiju with a blinding flash, fists full of energy, Raiden met him head on, their clash creating shockwaves that echoed through the air, Neil's fists moved with blinding speed, but Raiden was able to keep up thanks to the fluid movements gained from Inkiju's perfect body, it allowed him to match him blow for blow. This form is stronger, perfect for me, Neil said, grinning as he absorbed the energy from Raiden's attacks I'll only grow more and more. Raiden, remained silent, his eyes narrowing as he realized Neil's strategy, each punch and kick, allowed Neil to absorb more energy from Inkiju's body, making him more powerful. But Raiden knew Inkiju's power was not easily exhausted, one of the special parts about Inkiju was his limitless energy, after all, he does not need normal mana, instead, he takes his from the planet itself. Not knowing this, Neil's confidence grew more and more with each passing second. He felt invincible, his body humming with power my fear. It is why I'm here, why I can fight you on an equal ground. Shouted Neil as he blocked a few of Raiden's punches is that all you've got. He taunted, jumping backward creating space, and then launching a barrage of energy blasts, Raiden dodged and blocked some of them but as the barrage became impossible to block, he placed both hands on the ground and created an earth shield, of course even the shield broke down, from it, Raiden surged forward, his fists a blur of motion as he hammered Neil with a relentless series of strikes, Neil parried and countered, his body creating a massive shield over attacks that he couldn't parry or block, own blows fueled by the energy he keeps absorbing from his opponent. Newfound strength was increasing as he pressed for attacks, his fists connecting with Raiden in a flurry of powerful blows, Raiden didn't feel pain, that was just a perk of Inkiju's body, but that doesn't mean he was invincible, he struggled to keep up, blocking and dodging as best he could, but Neil's relentless assault was taking its toll, he wasn't tiring, his energy flowing more and more, and Raiden knew the reason, he kept on absorbing more and more, each punch sent shockwaves through Raiden's, but he refused to back down Raiden's eyes sharpened with determination endure it master, this is all part of our plan as he was about to agree with Inkiti, Neil swept Raiden's legs out from under him, causing him to crash to the ground shit, I seriously want to blast him with your noble phantasm. I understand your anger master, but if you do so now, you'll only fuel him further. Neil followed his attack up with a powerful stomp, but Raiden rolled out of the way just in time. Using his agility, Raiden sprang back to his feet and launched a counter-attack, his hands turning into blades with how fast they were attacking, but Neil's energy created a shield around him, effectively rendering Raiden's attack useless and allowing Neil to retaliate with a punishing uppercut that sent Raiden staggering backward. As the battle continued, Neil began to notice something how is this possible no matter how much energy he absorbed, Raiden simply stayed up and kept on fighting, it was as if he had endless energy this can't be. A flicker of doubt crossed Neil's mind, he pushed harder, trying to drain more energy from Raiden, he knew he was winning the battle, he knew he had yet to even suffer a true blow from Raiden, but something deep inside, some sort of fear, made him doubt his win. What's wrong, Neil your heart is full of doubt now, why is that taunted Raiden, creating more doubt in Neil's mind. Neil's body started to feel an itch as if something was wrong, 
The energy he had so eagerly absorbed now felt like a burden, needing to release it with flashy attacks that allowed Raiden to dodge easily, his muscles felt a tingle, his veins were burning, and his vision started to become hazy, he realized it too late, no, this is not possible said Neil as a punch came to his face, sending him staggering backwards oh, that felt different, that one hurt her you're feeling it now aren't you Neil and just as Raiden said, he was indeed feeling it, he realized it now, that his greatest strength was also his greatest weakness, he couldn't absorb this much energy without consequences, especially divine energy from the core of the planet. It is now our chance mass spoke the voice inside Raiden's mind, and Kija gave him the green light. You see Neil, something about you scared me a bit, someone who knows me inside and out, every attack I made only made you stronger, everything about you was my counter, but then you said you were afraid, that's when I realized my foolishness, I shouldn't have been worried, for I am truly dot superior. And now I shall prove it so, the chosen one not by name only, but merit as well. Now is the time to sing of the scars and splendor that marked the planet. Age of Babylon From the ground beneath them, the land turned golden, and as it started to deform, hundreds of swords, thousands of spears, and an endless amount of variants and different weapons started to form as they kept on rising and rising flying all the way in the skies, the entire square facing the Eiffel Tower was now a shadow of these weapons, then with the hand gesture the weapons all fell down. One by one they cracked the shield surrounding Niels before the first sword pierced his left shoulder, then another in his leg, another on his thigh, his body which had a physical strength that surpassed that of Superman, and was now fully weakened almost as if an internal combustion had happened inside, making him weak. Just as Neil was about to collapse from the amount of damage that had almost killed him, a dark gate suddenly opened beneath him, black tendrils reached out, wrapping around his limbs and pulling him into the void, before Neil could leave. He gave Raiden one look and said I wanted to kill you, save you from despair. But you persisted. This is your punishment. I shall destroy your world. Mark W.Y. words. Raiden couldn't reply back, watching as the gate swallowed Neil whole, leaving no trace of his presence master, there is no presence of firstborn here, but something weird is here, some tentacle monsters, Black in shape spoke a voice inside Raiden's mind I think I just saw one of them swallow Neil and save him just now, might be related to firstborn, keep sending me info Skathag. Understood. As Raiden was about to leave, the same gate he saw open earlier started to open on the ground, this time it was smaller but there were hundreds of it all around the battlefield, from its depths, black monsters with tentacles arose from the ground. Master, their energy, it is divine but Dark spoke in Kiju inside Raiden's mind, as he added they are similar to me, created by a god, but something about them saddens me, we must save them, I think, save them how would one go about doing that spoke Raiden, to which in Kiju said unfortunately they must be killed, it's a mercy, deep inside these things, are the souls of innocent humans, deformed and transformed into that, thing no, these things are humans realization hit him, these monsters that he was going to kill were merely innocent people that have been forced into a situation beyond them. Merlin do recon on all the locations we attacked and see if the monsters are there too, if so, inform the League, if they are here and in Tokyo, then I think every place where they attacked could be a location for them as well, however. Refrain from telling the League that they are humans, I don't think their consciousness can handle that spoke Raiden, sending a mental message to his advisor. I shall do so. I would also like to add, that Wonder Woman is not fighting her counterpart, from the looks of it, it must be a different variation of Superman spoke Merlin, this made Raiden frown as he started his battle against the monster saying damn it. I'll inform Batman, keep me posted, and stay hidden, unless you see one of the two important targets, I want you hidden, you are my trump card. Chapter 122, Pieces of the Puzzle Unveil Well, Superman is out instantly so I'm not having a great time, I uh, should. Listen, these motherfucker. Just make sure Diana wins. We got it all wrong. She's not fighting her counterpart. She's fighting a mix between Captain Marvel and Superman. Raiden cut the comms and went back to mowing down the tentacles, he was already back in his normal form, trying his best to limit the usage of mana from his Inkija form. I've finished with the monsters here in Tokyo, Still not trace of firstborn spoke Skathic, this made Raiden think a bit as he said go to the watchtower and help the others, 
we need to clear out the cities from these things and prepare for their next attack hearing that Skathak replied with understood as she rushed to the teleportation portal. Raiden took his time eliminating all the monsters infesting Paris. There were a lot of them, and they used a variety of attacks. Most attacks came from their tentacles, which they used to destroy buildings as if programmed to annihilate everything in their path. They also had monstrous breath attacks that spewed dark ooze and energy from their mouths. Raiden, being far more powerful than normal heroes, wasn't bothered by them, but the other heroes would take much longer to defeat the hundreds swarming the cities all around the world, Raiden finished his task first and decided to call Batman for an update. Batman, what's the situation any new information on the enemy Raiden asked. Batman looked at his monitor and replied, nothing major yet, currently, we've defeated every major enemy except the ones in Bialya, Battle 2, as you know, has failed, no trace of Alman. Battle 8 has also failed. No trace of Firstborn. Raiden listened closely and then noticed something odd. Wait a minute, what about Battle 3? Batman looked almost stunned as if Raiden's question made no sense. What do you mean what's wrong with the third battle? I'm asking what happened in the third battle, Raiden clarified. Batman, still confused, said, well, of course, we won it. Even though Batman said they had won, there was something in his mind that seemed off, as if something was missing. Raiden added on saying what's the situation there are their monsters. Batman replied, yes, Black Lightning and Aqualad are fighting them with Miss Martian and Robin. Raiden thought for a second and then asked and noticed how Batman didn't mention an important figure wait, what about the Flash? Batman, almost as if an error registered in his mind, responded, the Flash what is the Flash? Raiden's eyes widened in shock what do you mean, what is the Flash Barry Allen, the fastest man alive, red suit, yellow lighting, a not so funny but cool guy. Batman seemed to struggle as if he was trying to remember someone important but couldn't. I do not recognize who you are talking about, Raiden. Is there something wrong? Raiden questioned further, let me get this straight, you do not remember the Flash Barry Allen hold on, this might have something to do with time bullshit. Raiden then decided to call Merlin and Skavik, questioning them both, to his shock, neither recognized Barry Allen, Raiden thought to himself, holy shit, someone just erased the flash from the timeline. Or perhaps, from everyone's memory, I need to get to the bottom of this. Raiden called Batman again. Batman, please tell me you at least know who Johnny Quick is. Once again, Batman was confused. Who is Johnny Quick? It hit Raiden hard. Why are both Johnny Quick and the Flash missing from the lineup what happened in Battle 3 that changed everything and made them forgotten? Deciding to find answers, Raiden made his next destination, he was going to Montevideo, Uruguay, to investigate what happened. Arriving in Uruguay, Raiden decided not to join the battle raging there. Instead, he chose to stay hidden, acting as a silent detective to uncover what had happened during the battle that led to both the Flash and Johnny Quick being erased from existence, Raiden observed the fight, watching how Black Lightning and Miss Martian handled the monsters, with Robin helping Miss Martian. From the information he gathered, Miss Martian and Robin had defeated Breakdance, while Black Lightning and Aqualad had managed to take down Black Power. However, Raiden knew something was off. The Flash hadn't fought Johnny Quick alone, Batgirl had been with him. Raiden decided to dig deeper. Batman, this is Raiden. I have one more question. What happened to Barbara what happened to Batgirl? Upon hearing this, something finally clicked deep inside Batman's mind. He knew Barbara, he knew Batgirl, but he couldn't recognize where and why was she in his memory. I do not recognize her, Raiden. However, I know that something is wrong. I have this feeling deep inside my gut, as if I knew this person, what is happening, Raiden. Raiden thought for a moment before saying at first, I thought this might have something to do with time. Maybe Johnny Quick, like the reverse Flash, went back in time to erase Barry. But that wouldn't just erase Barry, it would change the entire timeline. And with my existence as an anchor of time, I don't think that's possible. Instead, I believe some sort of psychic ability is involved. An ability so strong that it made everyone forget the trio, Johnny Quick, the Flash, and Batgirl of course, not me due to my immunity from mental attacks. Raiden decided it was time to investigate, 
standing around and thinking wouldn't solve anything. He went to the battle location, searching for any clues. While looking, he found a bat-shaped weapon, one of those used by Batman and his crew. Raiden examined it closely. All of Batman's equipment was designed to either explode or be undetectable, since they were made by Wayne Enterprises, they were designed that way to avoid linking back to Batman's true identity. So, it was odd that this one remained intact not only that, it had the name Wayne Enterprises, and some sort of numbers under it. Ain't no way, are those Raiden immediately called Batman and said Batman, I'm sending you these numbers, run them through the computer, the enemy may have erased the memories, but these numbers, they are serial codes for tracking the team's movement, I remember them from when I was in the team. Hearing Raiden's request, Batman decided to do that, and the magic happened, a coordinate and a vital sign of someone, although Batman didn't recognize them, he knew it was due to the mental attack. Here you go, these are the locations of the tracker's serial code, most likely you'll find our missing member, be sure to be fast, their vital signs are weak, very weak. Hearing this, Raiden realized he had a lead. Batman's analysis revealed a nearby location, a secret cave near Montevideo. Raiden immediately flew to the cave and as he walked deeper into it, there he found her, half-conscious, in extreme pain, all bloodied up, and missing an arm, it was Batgirl, but she was still alive. Barbara. Barbara. Are you okay damn it? What happened Raiden asked, holding her wound and trying to heal her with his magic, Barbara opened her eyes weakly and half smiled saying I expected Batman to find me. Not you. But you're a welcome sight. I have something I need to tell you. No, wait, I'll take you to the med bay, your injuries are too critical, I was late. You might die. Raiden urged. No. Shouted Barbara as she coughed a bit this is. Too important, Barbara insisted. Johnny. Was going to convert and work with us. He was going to betray the crime syndicate, but we were ambushed. All of us, by Alman and Firstborn, I was injured by Alman but managed to escape, barely Firstborn took both of them, Johnny and the Flash. Even though Raiden was still worried about Barbara, he needed to know more so he questioned why though what did he want why did he take them. I'm not sure. Barbara replied weakly but according to Johnny. When he was at the crime syndicate headquarters, he overheard a conversation between Superwoman and Alman about something to do with Prime Earth and the destruction of the entire multiverse. Hearing this, many things started to connect deep inside Raiden's mind, many answers, but at the same time, new questions opened up, what is Prime Earth why Johnny and Flash what did the Light and Neil agree on and what is Firstborn and Alman's plan? Chapter 123, Pre-Attack Back at the Watchtower headquarters, Raiden stood by the glass of the med bay, staring in at the chaos inside. Batman was there too, going over a list he held in his hand. It was obvious from his face that the news wasn't good. Wonder Woman and Blue Beetle are in critical condition, Batman spoke going over the list of their injured friends. Martian Manhunter and Aquaman. Same thing, but they'll make it. Zatara though. It's been 12 hours since his operation started. And we're still not sure if he's gonna make it. Raiden's frown deepened as he looked at the others lying there in pain, he turned to Batman. What about Zatanna is she alright? Batman nodded, though his face didn't really change in expression as per usual for him she's been with him the whole time, I've already sent Nightwing to comfort her, you don't have to worry about her. Raiden let out a breath he didn't realize he was holding god damn it, I was the one that sent them to battle, knowing that some of them are injured because of choices I made is hard, or even dead but I have to stay strong, this is merely a fraction of a king's responsibilities, and I chose that path. Sigh what about the one I brought in Raiden asked, still annoyed due to the earlier information. This was the first time Raiden noticed that Batman was visibly upset as he spoke Batgirl's in critical condition too, she's tough, so she'll survive, but... I still don't recognize her, even after seeing her face, hearing her name. Nothing. Her name is similar to Commissioner Gordon so I asked him, but he doesn't recognize her either. The idea of a father forgetting his own daughter made Raiden's blood boil. Whoever did this is going to pay, I'll make sure of it, he spoke, trying to keep his anger in check after all he'll have time to unleash it, soon. And what about the big guy? Superman will wake up soon, 
Batman said, his tone flat. He wasn't hurt, just incapacitated. Raiden shook his head, frustration bubbling up. How has he not figured out a way to deal with kryptonite? Neil took him out in seconds. If I wasn't there, he could have died. Sai, what about the others? I'll handle it, don't worry about it, you are already stressed as it is, Batman replied. He then added, You focus on our next move. Raiden clenched his fist in anger as he said, Meet me in the conference room, we need to talk about what Batgirl found out. A few minutes later, Raiden, Batman, Merlin, Skathic, and Dr. Fate were all sitting around the big table in the Justice League's Watchtower meeting room. The screens around them showed battles still raging in places like Nigeria, Montevideo, and Metropolis. Paris and Tokyo had calmed down, but the rest of the world was still a mess. Batman broke the silence first. We're all here. What's the plan? Raiden leaned forward, trying to organize his ideas as he started to mention what Batgirl had reported to him, after a while, he concluded as of now, we know Alman and Superwoman are working together with Firstborn, but their alliance with Neil doesn't make sense, if what he told me is true, Neil came here to save his world, not destroy it. Batman frowned, obviously trying to piece things together. So there's a split in their ranks you think Neil Queen was betrayed? Exactly, Raiden said, feeling like he was finally getting somewhere. The Light would have never agreed to help Neil if his plans was to destroy the word. The light while weaker and dismantled still holds the same principle, and that is to control Earth not destroy, as for Neil. Neil's after something else. He wants souls, thousands of them. With those souls, he could summon Empty Hand, an entity I told you about before, and presumably offer me to him, in exchange for his world. Raiden paused for a second, making sure everyone was following. I don't think Alman and Firstborn are on board with that. From what I've seen, Firstborn is the one behind those tentacle monsters they appeared first on Tokyo, where he was supposed to emerge, and he's also avoided Scathatch at all costs, a god killer, as for the memory wipes affecting Flash, Johnny, and Batgirl, I have no idea how or who did that. Merlin finally spoke up. My lord, I think they're after something bigger, we already know their goal is Prime Earth, but what is Prime Earth I think I have a theory. Prime Earth might be the origin of our multiverse Earths if our Earth let's call it 16 and theirs is let's say 26, then the Prime Earth might be Earth 1 or to be more accurate to my theory Earth 0. Skathic, who'd been listening quietly, narrowed her eyes. So you are saying there's an origin Earth that created all the others? Dr. Fate nodded. It's possible. The multiverse works on the idea that every action creates a new world. But what if there was a world where nothing happened? the first of them all if that earth is destroyed, it could trigger a chain reaction that undoes all of the multiverse, you can't grow a tree without a seed. Merlin nodded along, his face serious. Exactly, they want to destroy the prime earth, not ours, but if they succeed then the consequences would be catastrophic. Batman leaned back, doubt on his face. Creating a bomb that could destroy an entire planet the size of earth. That's nearly impossible. Even the war world couldn't do it with just one bomb. It would take hundreds if not thousands of nuclear bombs to achieve something similar. Raiden's eyes widened as he finally understood. That's why they need Neil, I was wondering why they saved him if they had planned to betray him, and now I understand it, his power is what they need, he can absorb energy, and with enough time, he could get the amount of energy needed to destroy a planet, they sent him to fight me to drain my and supply him. Everyone went quiet understanding the gravity of what Raiden was saying. Skathic broke the silence, what about Flash and Johnny what do they need them for? Raiden nodded, having already thought this through. If they can run fast enough, far enough back in time, they could open a gateway to the Prime Earth. That's the enemy's plan. Batman was the first to speak, his voice low. So, what do we do now Raiden stood up, an outlet to unleash his anger has now been created, as he spoke we're going to Bialya, all of us. Batman immediately shook his head. We can't Bialya considers us enemies now. We'd be fighting the military, endangering civilians. We've been banned. Raiden's expression was full of anger, his eyes locking with Batman's. I told you before I plan to be the king of this world. I won't be shackled by the rules of mere politicians, some people might suffer, die or have their lives ruined, 
but to save the world, sacrifices must be made, you know this, Bruce, we have no choice, we are going there. He turned to the rest of the group. Our main target is Superwoman, find her and she'll lead us to Alman, and through him, we'll find Firstborn, if things turn chaotic, then Skathic, you are to deal with Superwoman. Batman, you handle your counterpart, Alman, Firstborn is the most mysterious, I'll take him on, he is mine. If Neil shows up, leave him to fate as for you Merlin. No more hiding. It's time we show them what we're really capable of, go all out. Merlin bowed his head, with a grin as his voice softly chuckled and said as you wish, my lord. Chapter 124, Firstborn vs Raiden Listen up, everyone, Raiden said, getting the room's attention. We don't know what kind of attack they're planning, or if they're already prepared so this is a stealth mission, our goal is to gather as much information as possible, then use Merlin's magic to communicate and coordinate our attack. I've already assigned each of you your targets. Now, our main objective is to take them down, but we must be smart about the timing of the attack. Be careful, we don't have a clue on what sort of hostages or threats they have prepared for us, attack when you're confident, I believe everyone here, is a good judge of when that is. Raiden showed the screen displaying their target, Queen Bee's castle in Bialya, Merlin was going to be the main communication leader of this attack, as Raiden couldn't use mental magic directly, instead, he would communicate with Merlin, who would relay his messages to the others. As Raiden finished with the plan, Batman, looking slightly annoyed, said I thought you didn't care about hostages and threats. Raiden turned to him, annoyed at Batman's accusation, saying I do care about the people, Batman, I want to save them, but if it comes down to it, I'll sacrifice a few to save the multiverse, priorities. You should know this better than me. With everyone prepared, the stealth mission started, Raiden immediately transformed into his assassin servant form, delving into the shadows as he infiltrated the castle, the others followed suit, each in a special way, Batman was no stranger to stealth, heading directly to the castle, disabling all security's measures and infiltrating it, Skathic had is easier, entering the shadow of guards one by one, she hoped around till she was inside, Merlin was a master of illusion, blending into reality, once a soldier, once a painting, once invisible, you can never detect him unless he wanted you to. As for Dr. Fate, well magic was key, as he turned invisible and flied inside. Merlin was the first to reach his destination, I'm inside the throne room, he spoke no one can detect me here, I see Queen Bee, and it looks like she's talking to one of Alman's lieutenants, Green Arrow's counterpart. Queen Bee's frustration was evident as she demanded a meeting with Alman and Neil, but she was denied, as Merlin relayed this information to Raiden he quickly pieced together the situation. It's clear now, that Neil Queen made an agreement with the Light, but Alman has broken it without their knowledge, they're controlling the castle through force. Batman, who had been surveying the area and infiltrated the castle's square, said there are a lot of soldiers here, more than usual, normally, Queen Bee controls her troops with her special ability to control man, but they're not being affected, instead, it looks like there are some sort of small tentacles attached to the backs of their necks, small tentacles. Skathic said as she added, I saw something similar in Japan, the monsters spewed small tentacles and tried to take control of people who couldn't escape, I eliminated them, but it seems they serve a similar function here. Raiden thought for a bit as he said Merlin inform the others, they're still fighting against them and might end up affected by them. Raiden, still in his assassin form, continued deeper into the castle, his destination was the basement, heavily guarded by soldiers, using his skills, he slipped past them unnoticed. Inside, he found a lab reminiscent of his past, when he was nothing but a weakling under Dr. Evo's experimentations, scientists were all around it, and in the middle of it, Neil was connected to numerous wires, those wires connected to a device, Raiden quickly identified that as the bomb. To his shock, he also spotted familiar faces, Superwoman, Alman, and a third person who looked exactly like Kara they reported there was another variation of Kara, looks like that's her Raiden muttered as he proceeded to inform the others. Immediately after, Skathic reported, I've located Firstborn and also found Johnny and Flash. They're running on some special treadmill, generating energy to power a, gate of some sort. 
Raiden looked up to see some sort of wires coming down from the ceiling looks like I'm under you scat hatch, they've split up, to protect their useful assets he then looked around and saw some scientists report to Alman only two hours and the bomb will be ready, and in another three hours, he gate should be open. Raiden once again reported this to the others as he said Merlin, meet me where scat hatch is, Batman come down to where I am and assist Skathic in dealing with these guys, fate too, we have a Kryptonian here, your magic should keep her at bay. Dr. Fate then spoke, revealing critical information Firstborn isn't the one controlling the soldiers. And I won't be able to help with the Kryptonian everyone was shocked hearing that, as Dr. Fate continued if found Clarion he's helping create the tentacle monsters and control the soldiers. Everyone was stunned, especially Raiden, he had used Clarion's information, and it was reliable, if he had betrayed them, wouldn't he misguide them shouldn't that be impossible he's a lord of chaos. Why would the Lords of Chaos want the multiverse dead it would be against their interest. They'd lose their source of chaos to which fate agreed, saying that's what I was thinking, but it seems Firstborn is smart, has somehow threatened Clarion's position with the Lords of Chaos, forcing him into this alliance, he must have made a deal with them. Narrowing his eyes, Raiden said, fine, deal with him. You know him best, everyone else proceeds as planned, we'll attack in 3, 2, 1. Go. The attack had begun, Raiden moved into position, his mind focused on his target, it was time to confront the one known as Firstborn, a being ranked in the Dark Army, Raiden knew this wasn't going to be like any battle he had fought before, even his battle with Trigon paled in comparison to what he was about to face, as he appeared, he looked at Firstborn, the air around him seemed too dark, black whose energy was emanating from him, almost like a living entity, spreading around the area, unleashing what can only be described as dread. His appearance was that of pure darkness, eyes filled not with anger and the rage of a killer, but with a cold, calm evil, this was a man who lived for destruction, relishing in the chaos and ruin he could wreak upon the world, as firstborn noticed Raiden, a twisted smile curled on his lips, although his face was hidden beneath the red mask, one could sense the excitement he exuded, as if this fight was what he had been waiting for. It didn't matter to him whether his plans with Arlman succeeded or not. What mattered was the thrill of destruction, the challenge of facing a worthy opponent. Rising from his seat, Firstborn addressed Raiden in a voice that was both mocking and indifferent, as if bored by him so, you're the special one, the one that even Empty Hand was worried about I've wondered for a long time what kind of man you might be, I've asked many about you, from what Neil had told me Nile, you went through a tough childhood. His voice filled with disdain as he continued tested upon, you suffered, lost your parents, lost in space, all of these things made you who you are today, intriguing to most perhaps, but to me, it sounds like you had it easy, compared to me, your life has been a mere picnic. But that's irrelevant, I am one to believe that pain forges glory, and I intend to destroy everything in my path until the world itself shivers upon hearing my name. Raiden sighed a hint of amusement in his eyes as he said I expected more from one of the strongest beings in existence, I didn't expect to be swapping stories of trauma here, I know little about you, but I know you're a god, a son of Hera and Zeus, a son so powerful that even Zeus feared you and cast you aside, lived hell and all that, but the path you chose, is not that of a man who overcame his past, it's those of a man chained by them. But as I said, I'm not here to help you change, I'm here because you are a threat to earth, to my kingdom, and to my world, and I'll treat you as such, you want destruction, and I'll bring that upon you. Raiden's form shifted as he reverted to his Inkija form once again, hundreds of swords, spears, and a variety of weapons, materialized all around the chamber, and with a swift motion of his hand, Raiden threw them directly at firstborn, the sword sliced through the air, their power enough to reduce buildings to rubble, but firstborn was unfazed, he didn't flinch as the blades approached, Instead, he simply walked forward, and the swords either shattered upon impact with his body or failed to touch him at all. His expression remained unchanged, cold, and calm, as he closed the distance between them with frightening speed. Raiden barely had time to react before Firstborn's fist connected with his guarded hands, sending him flying through the castle walls and out into the open, the impact was brutal, the force behind the punch something Raiden hadn't experienced in ages, not since his battle with Trigon. As he struggled to regain his footing, he noticed a dark energy hurtling toward him from the sky, like a meteorite descending, 
firstborn landed with a crushing punch aimed at Raiden's face, creating a massive crater on impact. Pain shot through Raiden's body, but he forced himself to stand, watching as firstborn approached slowly, as if he wasn't even trying you seem to misunderstand your position firstborn said, his voice calm, but dark, sending shivers through Raiden's body others may have needed years of preparation to face you, but me I am different. I stand above all things. You will die, but it will not be a beautiful death. It will not be glorious, nor heroic, you will die like a dog, crushed by sheer power, by absolute destruction, that is the fate I offer those who stand against me. Raiden, bloodied and in pain, knew that what he said was accurate, this was no ordinary enemy, even with his Inkija form, one of the strongest he had, had been rendered almost useless against this being. And rightly so. Firstborn was not just an entity of destruction, unlike Raiden he wasn't special, there was one firstborn in almost every reality, but this one was different, he was the one that won. He defeated and destroyed Olympus. And conquered the world, and with empty hands guidance, he was sent to other worlds. Where he could conquer and absorb Olympus's power. He was a being who had already destroyed and conquered four different variations of Olympus. Realizing he needed to tap into his true strength, Raiden decided to unleash the full power of Enkiju. He could feel the energy of the planet itself, Gaia's will, flowing into him. Enkiju was not just any servant, he was the embodiment of the planet's desire to survive he may not have qualified as a grand, but that does not lessen his powers at all. In fact, his power grows more the more threat to the planet there was, and Firstborn was one of those threats. You're an abomination, Raiden said, his voice in pain but still standing, as green energy began to swirl around him. You don't think, you don't live, you simply destroy, you are the antithesis of humanity, of dreams, of life, honestly. You're the worst thing I've ever seen, and you don't deserve to exist. The green energy increased and intensified, surrounding Raiden as his power grew, his green hair flowed behind him flying due to the sheer amount of energy, it was a calm energy, the true power of a being connected to the very essence of Gaia. I will awaken the breath of the planet. For I walk with humanity. Raiden's body began to rise, the energy forming the chains of heaven, a divine construct capable of binding all the gods from all pantheons. The chains hit the peak of the skies, then descended upon firstborn with a shout, Raiden's body fully became the chains, becoming the tip of them, akin to that of a dagger as he shouted. Enuma Ilish. Crashing through his mental and physical defenses, piercing straight into his heart. The explosion that occurred was immense, the shock wave felt across the world the clouds around the skies parted and a sound wave unleashed. As the noble phantasm's power faded, Raiden reverted to his normal form and quickly retreated, knowing he had given everything in that attack, the battlefield grew quiet, the dust settling around Firstborn's broken and bloodied body, each limp was destroyed, his blood scattered, there was nothing left of the almighty conqueror of four Earths. It was Raiden's victory. But then, a sound emerged from the silence, a dark, ominous laugh, it sent chills down Raiden's spine as he watched in disbelief, the dark energy began to ooze from the ground, wrapping around Firstborn's limbs, his body slowly regenerating, atom by atom, limb by limb an attack that was supposed to end a pantheon was nothing to this man. Firstborn's eyes gleamed with a twisted joy as he looked at Raiden that was the strongest attack I've ever faced he spoke with a cruel smile back in my days as a god, it would have killed me instantly, nay just the sheer force of its energy would have ended me, but as I stated before, seemed to misunderstand something, I was a god. Now, I've transcended that. You're looking at the firstborn, not merely the firstborn of Hera and Zeus. No. I am the firstborn to have ascended beyond godhood. I have become an eternal sovereign. Chapter 125, Skathic Unleashed While Raiden was dealing with firstborn upstairs, down in the basement, both Batman and Skathic had started their assault. Skathic threw her spear gracefully through the air, aiming directly at Superwoman's throat. No taunt, no warning, only deadly purpose, a god killer has no reason for banters and challenges, she merely does her job, Superwoman on the other hand, was having a conversation with Owlman was the sword came rushing, Owlman recognized this to be an attack and disappeared into the shadows, knowing clearly that whoever this was, he wouldn't be able to be them. Because Superwoman herself was barely able to evade that opening strike, 
the tip of the spear millimeters away from her skin as she twisted away and thus began a battle began as Superwoman shouted who dares. Before she could speak more, Skathak closed the distance trying to end her immediately, but she wasn't as clueless as before as she counter-attacked with a roundhouse kick, wanting to shatter Skathak's skull, at the same time, the heroic spirit was in motion, her body like a blur as she ducked under the attack and countered back with a sweeping strike of her spear. First blood went to Skathak, whose blade pierced deep into Superwoman's side. Ah! The pain only seemed to fuel Superwoman's rage, screaming, as she charged at Skathak, raining blow after blow down upon her, every blow was heavy, but Skathak dodged them all with allegiance. As if it was a dance for her, to an onlooker, she would be disappearing and appearing at the perfect moment. As her spear carved a blood-red pattern in the air, deflecting most of the blows and delivering some as well. The entire area where their battle was had been crushed, the floors crackled, and most of the lab was being decimated, but to them, it mattered not, after all, one wrong move and one of them goes down dead. Superwoman's eyes went ablaze with anger as she hammered her fists into the ground, releasing an unleashed wave of energy that reverberated through the chamber, these were her strongest attacks, she was deeply scared of Skathak, as for the first time in her life, she was fighting a losing battle, even against Neil, there was always the thought that he needed her and would kill her, but Skathak was different, from the get-go, this monster aimed for her head. Her blow was powerful enough to send Skathak hurtling away, but once again. She recovered in the blink of an eye, acrobatically jumping backward and landing on her feet before immediately resuming her attack with a chillingly cold stare, and ruthless intentions, a true master assassin, Gibald danced through the air, each stroke promising a serious blow, Superwoman had to go on the defensive, her powerful blows never able to connect on a Skathak, meaning her options were running out, every time she thought she had some sort of opening, Skathak was already two steps ahead, her spear slicing through the air, Superwoman's thoughts become more depressed as she started to realize all her paths lead to, death. The two women exchanged blow after blow at speeds only a select few, would be able to follow, with the battle continuing on, the basement lab echoed with the sounds of Skathaka's spear meeting flesh, grunts of pain and exertion as Superwoman's blood scattered all over the walls, slash after slash cutting onto her. This was Superwoman, her world's strongest, and all men fell to their knees fighting her, she was undefeatable, or that's what she thought, for her opponent was none other than Skathaka woman who had reached immortality through the battle she's fought, the slayer of gods much more powerful than Superwoman could imagine, she was queen of the land of shadows. With a sudden burst of speed, Skathak attacked left, it was a feint, drawing Superwoman's guard away from her right side, and in that split second, she struck, driving Gibalg into Superwoman's side again with enough force to punch through her near invincible skin, finally allowing the spear's cursed magic to dug deep into her skin, burning through Superwoman's flesh as she let out a scream of agony. But before Skathak could follow up with another attack, a blur crashed into her from the side, sending her flying across the lab, she hit the wall hard enough to crack the stone, but instantly regained her footing staring at her newest enemy, it was a copy of a woman she had seen before, Kara zor -El, but she knew it wasn't her, rather it was Kara Mayhem Kara Mayhem floated there, her eyes blazing red with anger you work with that man. He killed my cousin. You shall pay. She shouted her voice so full of venom. Skathak said nothing, she didn't need to, her answer was her spear, as she threw it with deadly precision at Kara, the Kryptonian's eyes widened in surprise as from a full hundred meters away, the cursed weapon seemed to cover that huge distance in a blink, but she managed to dodge at the last second, the spear darting past her by a hair's breadth, but the spear wasn't done, with a flick of her wrist, Skathak recalled Gibald to her hand, the spear spinning through the air as it returned to its master, Kara had no time to react as the spear slashed across her back, drawing a line of blood that seemed to burn with cursed fire, Kara screamed in agony, clutching at the wound, and found herself falling down to the ground, enraged but had a realization, that this woman was strong, strong enough to draw blood from her, strong enough, that her idol, Superwoman was still on her knees bleeding, but they were not going down without a fight as Superwoman was first, jumping at Skathak with wild, swinging punch. Skathak charged to shut her down, as her spear clashed with the fist, creating a, a thunderous impact that released a shockwave throughout the castle. It was now a two-on-one, but to Skathak, it mattered not, 
as she was holding her own against both Superwoman and Kara, each strike was precise her goal as always to wear down her opponents exploiting every weakness that could be found, until she found a deadly opening, if anything, Superwoman's anger made her attacks more predictable, and while Kara Mayhem was strong, she was also blinded by rage, and unlike the other two, lacked real battle experience. Even with their immense power, the two women made an awful duo. With a scream, Kara unleashed her heat vision, twin beams of energy that burned hot and traveled straight at Skathika's heart, but as Blur her body simply sidestepped the attack, closing the distance between them, taking advantage of the fact that Kara needed to shut her eyes for few milliseconds due to the power of heat vision, Skathika's drove her spear into Kara's stomach and twisted it, the Kryptonian screamed in pain, her body convulsing, as the curse started to spread, similar to how it did Superwoman. But before Skathik could finish her, Superwoman was on her again, slamming her fist into Skathika's side hard enough to crack ribs, grunting in pain, Skathik did not let go of her spear but released the blade free of Kara's stomach, turning back to Superwoman with annoyance and a hint of anger. It was time to end this. Inhaling deeply, Skathika's voice was finally heard as she chanted. Stab and penetrate. Thrust and impale. Gevolg alternative. With this, Skathik threw her spear with all her might. Gevolg whizzed by until its cursed magic transformed it into this huge, phantom spear that looked to pierce reality apart, flying in random directions with a line of red curse energy behind it, it pierced Superwoman's heart immediately, there was no time to react, there was no time to dodge, as the spear itself had a rule in it, no matter what, it would even bend reality to achieve its goal. The eyes of Superwoman widened in shock as ripples from the cursed magic invaded her body, blood flowed from her mouth, eyes, ears, and nose, and she collapsed, her strength leaving her in an instant, this was, death, but Skavik was not done, Kara Mayhem, still in pain from the previous assault, sought to escape from here, knowing full well, she had zero chance, but Skavik would have none of that, due to her ribs being broken, she knew chasing after was useless, she was fast, but, she won't be able to catch up with a flying Kryptonian with that injury, so instead she invoked another of her noble phantasms, one that Kara wouldn't be able to escape from. I will show you what lies beyond the world. I will lock you away in the darkness from the age of the gods. Tremble, freeze, and shatter into pieces. Gate of Sky The air grew dark around them as the gate to the land of shadows opened behind the escaping Kara, the darkness burst out, tentacles wrapping around the Kryptonian, drawing her in with an unstoppable force, Kara screamed in horror and pain, fighting back with all of her might, but it did not matter, this place could bind the gods, let alone a mortal, the shadows dragged her deeper into the abyss, her screams grew fainter until silence descended, by order of Skathik the gates closed once more. Till the next unfortunate soul that shall pass them. Skathika's spear returned to her hand, she observed the battlefield, checking for the surrounding area, knowing her two enemies were dead, but still disappointed with herself I will not be able to help master against firstborn much, I've wasted too much energy. Chapter 126, Batman vs. Owlman, Passing the Torch Somewhere in the twisting corridors of Bialya Castle, they snaked through the building, racing back and forth, pursuit and pursuer, the only words uttered in this chase were in grunts of the two counterparts, Batman threw a smoke bomb ahead, and the narrow hallway was now filled with dark clouds as Owlman instantly responded, placing infrared lenses down over his eyes, he whipped out a grappling hook and shot it toward a ceiling beam, swinging himself out of reach of Batman's pursuit. But Batman was ready for him, he shot his grappling hook in a heartbeat, aiming himself toward Owlman at breakneck speed, slamming into Owlman. Batman descended as a fist caught Owlman under the jaw, but he hit back with a taser gun, firing a jolt that stunned Batman, as he followed it up with a kick into the stomach. You're slipping, Bruce. Owlman spoke as he held his gun once more aiming at Batman how many more mistakes will it take for you to realize you're outmatched. We'll see, Batman said as he acrobatically jumped backward to avoid a second taser strike, he threw a trio of batarangs, each curving mid-flight directly at Owlman who smirked as he dodged them easily. Before Owlman could get a more smug expression on his face, Batman launched himself forward, starting a barrage of punches and kicks, Owlman armed with almost the same training, started a similar barrage of blocks, parries, and counters with equal force, the sounds of their metal's gauntlets resounding through the halls. With a tap, 
Owlman's gauntlet slid out razor-sharp blades, slashing at Batman's armored suit. He dodged but not quite quickly enough and received a slash on his side, he felt pain but used the momentum to drop a flash grenade between them, the light and sound from the explosion distracted Owlman for just a moment, enough to let Batman strike. Batman's knee slammed into Owlman's stomach, and he folded over completely out of the way, this was followed by an uppercut from Batman, sending his dark counterpart staggering backward, but Owlman wasn't done yet. Even as he staggered to keep his balance, he threw a small group of pellets on the ground, filled with explosives, Batman's eyes went white as the pellets detonated one by one, forcing him up into the air to avoid the blasts. Do you really believe you can stop me he said as he predicted Batman would fly upwards and aimed his hand there, from his gauntlet, a wire was released, wire wrapped around Batman, sending bolts of electricity straight through his body, Batman's teeth were gritted against the pain as he used one of the blades on his forearms to cut the wire, then used his advantage of high ground to jump down and attack saying you are a defunct replica. The battle continued, turning uglier by the minute, with both men throwing every gadget, every trick, every shred of their skill at each other, matching each other's energy, truly, counterparts. Owlman charged at Batman with a killing intent behind his eyes as he drew a blade from his belt, its edge gleaming with a deadly poison. Batman barely managed to dodge it, but Owlman was relentless, he forced Batman onto the defensive, the two men unleashed their attacks at one another. But just as Owlman seemed close to delivering the killing blow, Batman used the last of an opening to twist the blade and drive it into Owlman's ribs with a counter punch, that blade shattered one of Owlman's ribs, and he gasped, stumbling back in pain. Before Batman could react, a hail of arrows came flying down all over Batman, which left him with no choice for Batman but to roll aside, but then some sort of blast, threw Batman away as he knew it wasn't a gadget, he could see her flying in the air, with energy in her hands, blasting him with it until he hit the wall and crashed into a different room. You should have known better, Bruce, spoke Alman, holding onto his open wound, walking slowly due to the pain behind him, where Archer, Green Arrow's counterpart, and Aurora, an unidentified counterpart to the League you may be good, but I'm always one step ahead he then looked around him and said look at this, we've arrived at our destination. Batman looked around, he was in the throne room, it had a large opening, clearly made by Raiden and Firstborn's battle, at the ends of it, he could see Flash and Johnny Quick still running on the treadmills, he didn't recognize them, due to the memory loss, but he was curious to see the treadmills that we placed on the opposite side, he could see the gate was starting to form and open up, close to the treadmill he could see a cage, where a girl was placed there. Noticing Batman's looking around, Alman taunted more saying oh, you're wondering about our fellow speedsters one runs to the future while the other runs to the past, creating a paradox, the energy then instead of taking us to the past or future, takes us to the origin of life and time, prime earth, it wasn't hard to convince Johnny, just had to place a little speed bomb on his little sister's neck, if he stops running, her head explodes. As for your friend, Flash, well, I didn't even need anything, just seeing the little girl, made him run he then placed his hand on a bomb that Aurora had been holding with her energy this isn't fully ready due to you and that assassin's attack, but, it should be enough to destroy one earth. Hearing Alman talk, Batman was curious as he asked buying time why do all of this if you destroy prime earth, wouldn't your earth be destroyed too the question made Alman frown as he felt disappointed by his good counterpart saying I had at least assumed you'd figure this out dot because it's meaningless Batman was even more confused to what Alman had said, but he wasn't done saying. It's all meaningless, Alman started off, his tone cold when Neil Queen came into my world and told me about multiple Earths, I was disappointed. Every action that I made, every choice, became all meaningless. Whether good or evil, there will always be some other counterpart, doing the opposite. If I were to spare someone, there is another Earth where I didn't. So, it was all meaningless. He paused, looking up at the ceiling again, a sinister grin crossing his face and then it hit me, if nothing matters, if there are infinite earths, possibilities, choices, all redundant in meaning, then there is actually only one realistic choice, destroying everything, prime earth is the foundation of the multiverse, destroy it, and you destroy them all. That his voice almost euphoric is the only meaningful choice. Hearing that, Batman understood that the man in front of him was psychopathic, unhinged, not a mere evil counterpart, but rather, an abomination, 
he looked at him in the eyes saying confidently we will not allow that suddenly, a blur of blue and black attacked Arlman with a kick, as he stumbled backward. It was Nightwing, buying time had worked for Batman, swirling his escrima stick, which crackled with electricity from both ends, as he attacked Arlman, each blow was precise, almost surgical in its placement, almost toying around with Arlman, all his counterattacks seemed useless, as if Nightwing was somehow designed to defeat him, able to see all his moves ahead, and with the injury Batman inflicted on him, he was not faring well. Aurora while shocked from the sudden attack, tried to unleash a blast at Nightwing, but before she could, Static was on her, crackling with electricity, and shot a stream of lightning with one hand toward her. Aurora stopped it with a wavering energy shield, but Rocket surged from above, launching a kinetic blast, which took Aurora full force and threw her against the wall, Nightwing wasn't alone. Alman regained his balance and fought back against Nightwing, delivering a brutal uppercut, he quickly followed this up by using his leg in a swift motion to unbalance Nightwing, but Nightwing saw it coming flipped back to get out of the move, and with a spinning foot hit Arlman in the chest, sending him back a few steps, Batman used the same exact move on me when we were training, and I've thought this counter up for days. Glad that it worked. I knew this world's Batman kept strays around and taught them, but you aren't as good as you think you are, Owlman said, he wiped blood from his lip and launched a few shurikens right at Nightwing, the shuriken buried themselves uselessly on the wall behind Nightwing, as he had already saw them coming, and jumped with his stick, using his acrobatic movements, he threw his own batrangs at him. Meanwhile, Archer was engaged in a fierce battle with Green Arrow, their arrows cut through the air, each one just missing its target, as the two archers scrambled about, trying to get the better of each other, Archer laughed as he launched an arrow, splitting into three while still flying, thereby making Green Arrow duck for cover in three directions at once. But Green Arrow was one step ahead, launching an explosive arrow into the air, destroying all three. Is that all you've got, not much of a counterpart? Mocked Green Arrow, Archer growled in frustration and released another barrage, but Green Arrow was ready and dodged under the arrows, and closing distance with a swift kick that soon had him sprawling looks like you don't have experience fighting people like yourself. Further across the room, Aurora had recovered and was now raining blows of energy constructs blades, spears, spikes, at Static and Rocket, Rocket merely used her force field to block them all and protected Static with her, then created an opening for Static to attack. Static seized the opening, leaped midair, and sent an extraordinary pure form of lighting, directly straight toward Aurora, the force hit her square in the chest, knocking her out and sending her across the walls, causing a heart attack. There was no way that Batman could have remained standing for an ordinary person, his body just wanted to give in to the fighting that was going on around him, Batman glanced over to see Nightwing fighting Alman in a no-holds-barred melee, each well aware and using every one of their tricks, it was Alman who again became the first to try and create an opening and threw a flashbang into Nightwing's face, Nightwing wasn't phased in the least, merely closing his eyes and activating his sound. Dampener in his suit, when the next attack came he easily dodged it, and sent a kick into the center of Alman's ribcage, right when Batman got him. Alman grimaced in pain but was too angry to care as he lunged towards Nightwing, desperate and furious, Nightwing was faster than that, he turned, avoided the attack, and struck back with a crushing elbow strike right into the back of Alman's head, who fell face first on the ground. Alman tried to rise, but Nightwing didn't let up and connected a barrage of fast blows, leaving Alman bruised and battered, then increased the intensity of the attacks, with his escrima, delivering a shocking amount of electricity to his core. Alman convulsed in pain as the electricity ran through his body, his muscles tensing up while falling to his knees. Without releasing him, Nightwing smashed the last knee strike into his face, leaving him unconscious. Green Arrow had already taken care of his counterpart, and the battle was over, it was a victory for Batman's allies, Nightwing was immediately at Batman's side, he was concerned Bruce, are you alright we did it, we defeated him. But Raiden's still out there, he's the only one left, we need to help him. He needs you. Batman was in total pain, his battle with Owlman was too tiring, he was in pain, and the extra attacks by Aurora completely shattered his bones, but even still usually this wouldn't stop him, but today, he saw something that did, Nightwing you go, Dick, I'm done here, I'll release Flash and Johnny and take them back to the watchtower. 
Nightwing's eyes opened ever so wider in the weight of the words, knowing full well what Batman was implying, he was, passing him the torch of leadership, he nodded and said. I won't disappoint you. Chapter 127, Chaos vs Order A blast of chaotic energy impacted the air where Dr. Fate had just been as his golden aura flared allowing him to dodge. Narrowly, he stared off at his enemy, Clarion, the witch boy, but something was deeply off, the normally twinkling lights of the devilish childlike lord of chaos were nowhere to be found, replaced by something empty and unsettling as if he was a husk, his mouth twisted into a devilish smile, he was no longer the trickster that fate knew. He was something darker, more inhuman. The lords of chaos must have done something to him. But before Dr. Fate could bring himself to react properly, Clarion shot his hands dark and twisting tentacles released from them, closing on Fate's limbs, wrapping around his body, in an instant, they were cut as Fate stood with a shield made of pure energy springing from his hand, it shone with a golden light as the tentacles struck it, each impact created a crack, Clarion's attack was relentless, each strike more powerful than its predecessor. Clarion. Dr. Fate's voice resounded, echoing in the chamber you must regain control. Do not let those fools rob you of who you are. A rather ironic shout, he was asking for his enemy to return to normal but Clarion said nothing, his eyes turned hollow as he surged onto the attack, his waves of dark magic crashing against Fate's defenses, the air was engulfed with raw magic power, and the ground shook beneath their feet as it literally could not bear the amount of mana. Dr. Fate knew that this had to stop, now. He swept an arm out, creating a golden sigil, that of a cross with a rounded head, it pulsed with arcane energy, releasing it towards Clarion, seeking to knock him out at the least or to trap him within a prison of magic until he could be healed, but Clarion proved faster than expected, without the shackles of his childish demeanor, he was a formidable enemy, a calculated one, he tore through the cross with a burst of dark energy, destroying it immediately. Let chaos be rampant. Ahiaha the witch boy's laughter became more twisted and hollow in sound as he raised a wave of the shadows, rushing at fate like a wave, Dr. Fate created a wall of golden light to block the wave head on, the two opposed attacks met, and light pushing up against the dark, but Clarion's magic was incredibly strong, this was him unleashed, Clarion no longer trying to play nice. Fate narrowed his eyes, he could feel it, the chaotic force that powered Clarion was only getting stronger, a sign that whatever Firstborn had done, it empowered Clarion beyond his normal capacity. Clarion charged again, and Dr. Fate was prepared, reading himself himself, he had to defeat Clarion, drive him back under control, yet just as he began to cast he saw Clarion's eyes burning with something new, it felt horrible, frightening even. Clarion clapped his hand and placed them against the ground, and the earth opened up, releasing from the ground blasted dark glittering tentacles, it wasn't the same as the shadow ones he released earlier. No, these ones were real, they felt slimy and dark, as if they were alive, they blasted off towards Dr. Fate, who dodged through pure instinct, as he did so, he could feel the very fabric of reality around them start to distort under the strain left by the force of the attack. These are, Eldritch Tentacles. Clarion's power was increasing, but now Fate understood this power. It wasn't the normal power of Chow's, they were different, it was almost as if Clarion was being consumed by some other being, and it was slowly becoming him, Dr. Fate knew he had to take action fast whatever this is, I cannot allow it to summon in our world. This is now a matter of order. He summoned the energy of order, forming a spear out of pure light and threw it at Clarion, the spear shone into the dark air falling as if it was a comet. But Clarion's movements were inhumanly swift, he effortlessly dodged aside, and the blast was defended against by the tentacles, which formed a flesh shield around Clarion, with a mocking grin the tentacles started to merge with Clarion's left hand as he raised it, creating a similar shield, a copy of Fate's shield, but instead of light, it was made out of shadow, Clarion flicked his wrist and the dark spear flew at Dr. Fate, blinding in speed. Though he deflected in time, the attack had left him open, something Clarion took full advantage of to close the distance within an instant, his left hand out, releasing the tentacles, going for Fate's helm, the impact had been brutal, sending Dr. Fate crashing down to the ground, his golden aura flickering as he got up, but he was at least safe, for a moment there, the tentacles almost took his helmet off. Before he could even regain his footing, the Lord of Chaos was upon him, 
his hand clamped upon the helm of Dr. Fate with a strength that should have been impossible to the witch boy, his eyes turned into a dark slit as he spoke. Order, that's who you serve correct the lord of order and chaos, foolish beings. Dr. Fate called upon what strength he could muster, it was now or never, Clarion was close a necessary sacrifice as fate muttered divine order. As he spoke, from his helmet, a pulse of golden energy was released, the pulse spread through the room destroying all the tentacles, and as Clarion was close, his body suffered the most, bleeding from his mouth, the pulse then turned into a massive light shield that shined down from behind Clarion and stabbed him in the chest. I see, you were trying to keep this one alive, shame spoke Clarion, his body destroyed and reeked, but the darkness in his eyes was different, it was bored as if losing Clarion wasn't really a problem to it. Though you seem to have lost your power, shame, it's been ten thousand of years since I fought a lord of order. As the entity inside Clarion finished speaking, a small tentacle came out of Clarion's mouth as it looked at fate, who now had a destroyed, dead body, with the helmet on the ground, and left towards its true owner. Raiden was shocked, his eyes scanning firstborn, he expected at least a few scratches, some marks, some signs of damage, yet, it wasn't there, firstborn appeared to have been remade, as healthy as ever, this was not the first time Raiden was facing a strong foe, neither was it the first time he had met a warrior who had withstood a noble phantasm, in fact, some of his enemies have survived an onslaught of noble phantasms before, but this was different, the noble phantasm he had used was far stronger, especially against godlike beings like firstborn. Inkiju's Enuma Elish was designed to humble the gods, to bind them, to destroy them. It wasn't supposed to be defended against so easily. Seeing Firstborn survive it unscathed, shook Raiden to his core. Raiden knew he could transform again and summon another servant, but he wasn't sure that that would help, Inkiju was already powerful, on par with a grand servant, his power was outstanding, even if he did not hold the title of grand, and despite his trust in the system, which never failed him before, Raiden hesitated, the system always provided the right servant at the right time, but it wasn't a guarantee, for example, during the battle against Trigon, it summoned Orion. Orion was strong, and he alone could match Trigon. Still, he did not have the capability to defeat him. Raiden could have survived that battle, but not defeated Trigon, only through Raven's help that he managed to win that battle, and that made him worry. What if the system gave him a servant who could only survive against Firstborn, but not defeat him surviving wasn't a winning option here, Firstborn planned to destroy not just the world but the entire multiverse. Firstborn smiled at Raiden's lost expression and said, I am disappointed. I know that look it's of a man defeated, one who has come to the realization that he has bitten off more than he could chew. Are you finding ways to slip out of my hands coming up with a way to plead with me, beg for mercy I don't have any of those in my core. I live to wreak havoc to destroy those who dare to stand against me, and right now, that's you. Firstborn continued I'll give you one chance, stand proud and fight to your death, at least let the people see you die with dignity. Not that it'll be a glorious death. I'll decimate your body, toy with it. I'll hang your head on the steps to my castle on Olympus, your head will be at the doorstep for all to see. As he listened to the near comically evil speech, Raiden could not help but smile. I thought you knew me or at least something about me, I guess you are not very well informed, are you Raiden said, smiling you see, I don't give up, and I don't run away, never fought a battle where I decided to flee, my enemies might run, but me I fight to the death, and I take offense to all the shit you just said. So, prepare yourself, I shall go all out now Merlin. As soon as Raiden called out to Merlin, the battlefield changed. The desolation of the crater created by that noble phantasm became a lush, beautiful landscape, to the left and right, fields of green, with flowers stretched as far as the eye could see, further ahead stood an enormous white tower, and above, the sun shone radiantly in the sky, shining heavenly. It was paradise, true to the word, befitting Merlin's creation. Merlin dropped lightly, floating at Raiden's side my lord, are we to begin he asked with a smile. Of course. Raiden said. Everything changed with Merlin in the way, Raiden's aura flared, his strength surging from the buffs coming from the Garden of Avalon, an eternally secluded utopia where any evil that entered its borders would suffer, Firstborn's body filling with debuffs and weakening spells, as correctly stated by the chant that created this noble phantasm. 
only those free of sin may pass. Free from those debuffs, Raiden only grew stronger, adding to it Merlin's hero creation skill, increasing Raiden's strength and magic, in this moment, Raiden felt as if his magical power was limitless, as if he was back on Odin where he could change his servants at will. Let's dance, shall we Raiden said, preparing for a glorious battle. Chapter 128, The Crawling Chaos Not a second passed by. As the battle began, Raiden was already in his Arthur form, with Excalibur in his hand, then he rushed towards Firstborn, knowing this fight was going to take every amount of strategy and strength he had, it would have to be a battle of endurance, at every turn, Raiden had to chip away at his opponent, with every servant he had ever fought using every trick in the book just to weaken Firstborn. His plan was simple but hard to archive, weaken the Firstborn enough that, when he transforms again, the system would grant him a servant strong enough to defeat Firstborn. With Excalibur's golden glow, Raiden closed in on the Firstborn, aiming a slash at his neck, but as if it was a casual occurrence, Firstborn raised a hand to block the legendary sword slash as if it were nothing, in fact, it was Raiden that felt a reverberating force his arm due to the impact. And before he could react, Firstborn had delivered a crushing punch to his face, sending him flying backward. Oh, you thought by weakening me using the strange energy of this land, you could defeat me utterly shameless and foolish. Firstborn taunted, his tone filled with disgust I am beyond you, I am eternal. In an instant, Firstborn closed the distance between him and Raiden, the latter braced himself for the assault by transforming himself into his most durable form, Heracles. Unleashing an endless onslaught of punches, Firstborn pummeled Raiden. He was defending himself and tried to deliver some punches, but he was severely outmatched. However, at the right time, Merlin plunged from above, swooping down with the glow of a golden beam from his sword, Firstborn turned toward the new threat, raising his left hand in an attempt to block the beam of light, this gave Raiden an opportunity to land a heavy blow, this time forcing Firstborn back, but it was hardly enough, the combined strength of Raiden and Merlin barely resulted in a scratch. We need to do more, Raiden muttered, his voice filled with frustration. Closing his eyes he sent a mental message to Merlin as he transformed yet again, now into Ashvatthama, calling out to his noble phantasm, the Chukram, then activating all his strengthening skills he focused on the attack. The Chukram was flaming as it flew directly at firstborn, he caught it with both hands, the spinning wheel ground to a halt, but Raiden had anticipated this it was merely a distraction, from the left and right, Raiden and Merlin attacked simultaneously, Raiden now in his Siegfried form, sword raised high. The evil dragon shall fall. Bombing. Raiden unleashed his noble phantasm. On the right, Merlin followed suit with his mock Excalibur, the two attacks combining into a brilliant explosion of energy. The firstborn was caught right in the middle and fell to his knees under the intense pressure. Raiden wasn't done, transforming into his Arthur form once again he started to chant Excalibur. The golden beam of light continued its attack on firstborn, a combined attack of four noble phantasms. But when the dust settled, Raiden had nothing to smile about. Firstborn still knelt there, panting but undefeated, unharmed, the disgusted look still on his face as he spoke not enough, he looked at Raiden and screamed. Show me more. Raiden's instinct screamed at him as something was behind him and he'd sidestepped just in time to avoid a mass of writhing tentacles reaching out of the void, he hadn't seen that one coming anew, disgusting ability from Firstborn, the tentacles multiplied seemingly appearing out of thin air as if the very atmosphere had been torn open. Firstborn's twisted grin widened. Let me show you true despair. The tentacles chased Merlin and Raiden, but after the two created a distance, instead of chasing them, the tentacles started to open their mouths, from the depths of their horrifying circular mouths, a laser of dark fire was unleashed, forcing Raiden and Merlin away to the edges of the garden. She's here, Merlin said out of nowhere, his voice utterly calm. Raiden nodded, relief washing over him good. Let her in. We need all the help we can get. Merlin opened a section of the Gardens of Avalon, and a dark red laser cut through the battlefield impacting Firstborn, and cutting his chest open, the first wound that was inflicted upon him ever since Inkij's noble phantasm, the blood gushed out as he felt true pain from it, he looked at his new opponent, with a cursed spear in hand, Skathik was his new opponent. A worthy one, show me. Nightwing, Green Arrow, Rocket, 
and Static showed up as well as Nightwing said what's the situation. There's no situation, Raiden replied with a dark look on his face we either beat him, or Earth is gone, it's as simple as that. Merlin activated his magic on the team, powering it up, and infusing them with renewed strength. Everyone, focus on those tentacles, give me time to recover, do not engage firstborn, there's only death in facing him Raiden ordered, Nightwing nodded as he said the others should be here soon, the battle outside is almost over. Good. Now go. While tentacles were keeping the rest busy, Skathik was fighting firstborn directly, though he was far stronger, the cursed spear of Skathik chipped at his defense, bringing forth damage that not even a person like him, self-proclaimed beyond a god could keep unscathed. But with every strike, she left him, in agonizing pain, as the curse chewed through his very being. As he sensed that he was being truly pushed back, Firstborn smiled as he spoke this is surprising, I expected him to be the one to push me to the edge, but you, you are a variable I didn't recognize. If so, I shall truly go all out, I shall show you what I meant by surpassing the gods. Firstborn created a distance between him and Skavik as hundreds of tentacles blocked her way, giving him time to change into his true form his arms and legs twisting in impossible ways with a disgusting crack sounding out across the battlefield. His skin, already wretched in color, began to bubble up and squirm as if like there was something underneath that wanted out, his dark red eyes rolled into the back of his skull, only to be left with a hollow gaping hole that covered all of his face. His flesh started to rip away and stretch, long jagged slits from his skin tearing open, flowing across his body, to show a seething mass of wriggling, pulsating tendrils inside, the tendrils were coated in a sticky tar-like liquid, each ending with a razor-sharp, barbed claw. The tendrils tangled, lashed, and coiled around each other, there was an eternal cyclone, living flesh, and a nightmare of shadows. His mouth yawned impossibly wide, splitting his face in half as rows of needle-like teeth erupted from his jaws. A monstrosity on the battlefield, grotesque as an undead god, all that was human in his shape blended away and was lost, he was surrounded by a dark, aura that distorted reality and changed the air into colors of unnatural shapes, defying every law of reason, an abomination that shouldn't exist a being that defied the laws of existence, a being that the world refused to accept. Then his voice came back, only it was no longer his alone, there was a darker, more horrifying voice dominating him, reverberating on the battlefield as if a hundred of him were speaking. I am he, the crawling chaos, madness incarnate that devours worlds. The harbinger of despair. What now stood before Raiden, Skathik, and others was no longer something of this world. It was an entity of pure terror. I've had many names, but one that truly represented me was. Niarlathotep. Chapter 129, The Outer God's Power. I've had many names, but one that truly represented me was. Niarlathotep. Raiden and everyone observed the monstrosity that had been summoned on the Garden of Avalon, as he looked at them, or at least they assumed he was, his new appearance was so horrific that, one could not tell where he was even looking. Do you understand now why you failed before you called me an abomination correct an antithesis of humanity, of dreams, of life, ha 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 you were not wrong. I am an outer god. I refuse existence. As he screamed those words, the garden of Avalon, which was giving Raiden strength started to break down and crack until it was completely destroyed you will not contain me then in an instant he closed the distance on Raiden, his claw-like hands almost cutting his neck, the latter dodged backward, but he wasn't fast enough Raiden barely dodged past Niarlathotep, whistling air was heard as the clawed hands swept by within inches from his throat. Even so, that swipe's force sent him tumbling backward to skid across the crumbling ground. Skathik, being a warrior to the bone, did not need any signal, in an instant, she flashed forward, her crimson spear glowing with deadly malice. The spear itself could bore through the greatest of armors and did not flinch as it pointed at Niarlathotep's chest, but he seemed to shift, ripple like he was shadow and mist, so that the weapon passed through him harmlessly. Chuckling again, his voice resonated in a thousand voices speaking in a chorus of oneness, echoing on top of one another. A valiant effort, futile nonetheless. Do you not understand your weapons, your magic mean less than nothing against an outer god? Skathika's eyes narrowed reading herself for another assault, at the same time, Nightwing, Rocket, and Static leapt into action, Nightwing charged an array of explosive batrangs, 
each charged with the juice of enough power to bring down a building as for rocket, her hands glowed with purple kinetic energy blasts that rained down upon the entity's core and finally static, buzzing with electricity, summoned a massive bolt of lightning aiming it directly at Niarlathotep. The combined onslaught was blinding, a flash of light and energy which would have destroyed any mortal foe, still their enemy, was not mortal, as the light faded, Niarlathotep stood utterly unharmed. His form writhed and twisted in ways more grotesque and terrifying by the second. You think you can harm me with such trivialities I am beyond your comprehension. Niarlathotep roared, shaking the very foundations of reality with his voice. Rocket's eyes widened with horror. How do we stop something like that? Static gritted his teeth and powered up for another attack. Just hit him harder. No, Raiden said, his voice still calm, even in this chaos we need to stall him as much as possible. But before any plan could be formulated, Niarlathotep struck out once more, his tendrils cut through the air like whips. Raiden transformed instantly, shifting into his servant form of Iskandar. He met Niarlathotep head on, their impact sending shockwaves that rattled the ruined garden. The impact shook Raiden to his very core, Iskandar was strong, his sword clashed with Niarlathotep's claws, lighting crackling around him, but strength wasn't why he chose Iskandar. Your resistance is... amusing. But it ends now. Yeah let me show the true resistance of humanity. Come, gather around again, fearless fighters who all dreamed of reaching the farthest land. The marks we make here will be our glory. Ionio I hit Iroi. As the reality marvel took hold, the world shifted into a barren desert, a red sky burning above. Still clashing with Niarlathotep, Raiden gritted his teeth and summoned the full might of Iskandar's noble phantasm. Behind his back, a ten thousand strong army emerged, legendary and mythical warriors who served King Iskandar, they screamed in a courageous manner as they charged against the outer god, resounded across the sands. Their charge shook the ground, and dust rose in clouds with their charging figures at a distance, raising their weapons high in a yell of battle. His many eyes shifted, though Niarlathotep found his regard saturated with twisted amusement for the incoming horde more souls to be devoured well, then he sneered, form rippling with dark energy. I shall grant you all that honor of becoming nothing. Raiden stepped back to let the army pour by him with all its might in front of the eldritch horror, he watched with rapt attention as they fell on Niarlathotep like a storm, their weapons glinting as they attacked with all their might spears, arrows, swords, all clashed with the eldritch god. But Niarlathotep was beyond mortal comprehension, with one slash of his claw, an entire rank of soldiers vanished into thin air, disintegrating into nothingness before they could even scream in terror, he moved through the army like a plague, jumping from one side to a side, his tendrils of darkness snatching warriors from the ground, crushing them in an instant, his tentacles extended piercing tens of soldiers, his mouth releasing a dark fire that burnt away the soldiers fully erasing them. Raiden watched in anger as the remainder of his army was killed off, there was nothing to do but witness the eradication of the once unstoppable force that Iskandar's army had been. Even their strength, bravery, and loyalty could not stand up against an outer god. Knowing full well that he summoned them to stall for time, Raiden felt a slight pang at their manner of death. It only took him less than ten minutes to completely eradicate the army, they crumbled to nothing but scattered ashes in the wind, giving Niarlathep a joyous scream more blood more. Entertain me fools Raiden breathed hard as he turned back to normal, defeat was heavy upon him. His fists clenched with the thought of summoning another servant, though the chances remained impossibly against them. But before he could do anything else, a new presence showed itself, across the desert of Bialya, a red dash of hope came flying away creating a gust of wind, from the sky dropped a figure, his red cape fluttering behind his back, his eyes aglow with an intense determination, the man of hope. The man of steel, Superman. Superman landed next to Raiden, his eyes locked on Niarlathotep. Looks like you guys might need some help here. Raiden looked at the heroic entrance with annoyance as he said where the fuck have you been? This made Superman scratch his head in shame as he said my apologies for leaving you alone last time, I didn't expect him to have something like that. Yeah, time to make it up for me, that thing is the strongest in the world right now, we need to weaken it, enough that I'm able to summon a perfect servant for him, said Raiden, to which Superman smiled as he said. Worry not, you are not alone, we will all help, said Superman, 
to which Raiden raised an eyebrow saying all. As he asked that, a gate opened behind him, a massive one, coming out of it, was the full might of the Justice League, and the team. Wonder Woman walked towards Raiden and placed her hands on his shoulder saying a king must have an army correct well, we apologize for being late, my king Raiden nodded as he said everyone. This outer god claims that he's here to devour earth, that we, humans, aliens, or any mortal, don't deserve this land as ours. Are we willing to accept that as truth no? Since I claim to be your king. I have the right to not accept it on your behalf. As such, I command you. Justice League of Earth. Show this outer god. The power of mortals. Chapter 130, Niar Lathotep vs the Justice League. Raiden's eyes locked onto the menacing form of Niar Lathotep a dark and twisted manifestation of cosmic horror that they either defeated today or lost their home to it, as he tried to move, Raiden was surprised to see a spear in front of him. No, stay and recover, Skathik said, her voice flat and firm. Raiden turned towards her, his eyes narrowing I can't do that, if I allow him to rampage more, he might kill one of us. This is a war, you are not responsible for everyone's life she said, and her tone was not one to argue with first was Neil, then firstborn, if you go into battle now, you'll only exhaust yourself further, recover. Raiden's hands tightened I. This is not a fight we're likely to win, Raiden, we need you, ready, not tired, I know it hurts you that some have been injured due to this day's battle, but this is what you have to endure, if you are to become a king, watch from the back, and prepare yourself, I will weaken him for you, Skavik said. Raiden hesitated, his gaze flicking to the battlefield, where members of the Justice League were already attacking, he knew she was right, his mana reserves were low, his body protesting with tired muscles and aching bones from battles prior. Fine, don't die out there, Shishao he spoke as he sat down, starting to meditate, in the same way Merlin had taught him, trying to recover as much mana as possible, before his next big transformation. Skavik nodded briefly, and then returned her attention to Niar Lathotep, as if she was never there, like a blur she joined the attack. And so it began, first was Superman, the Man of Steel's figure could only be described as a blur of blue and red as he shot toward Niar Lathotep, a punch with all his might, his fist hit creating a shockwave all around the desert of Bialya, but Niar Lathotep hardly flinched. Somehow, his dark form sucked in the blows, his twisted smile grew white as he returned the favor with his own punch, and Superman was sent crashing. Wonder Woman was next as she swung her sword skillfully through the air, she slashed at Niar Lathotep's stomach, and the blade flared with godly energy as it struck, but the Amazonian could not force her way through the eldritch fluid armor of the outer god, he didn't even care for her, as with one hand, he swatted her away like a fly. The other members started to join the fight, Nightwing was the first to dive in. His acrobatics were unmatched as he sprang and flipped around Niar Lathotep, searching for an opening. A barrage of explosive discs flew from his hands but fizzled out upon contact with the dark aura that clung to the entity, a tendril of shadow lashed out, catching Nightwing mid-air and penetrating through his left abdomen. A mortal such as yourself should simply kneel and present thy head in shame laughed Niar Lathotep. No, Dick. Screamed Superboy. Joined by Supergirl they charged at Niar Lathotep with all of their power, managing to hit him a few good times before it became clear they really were outclassed, his laughter resounded through the battlefield as he caught both of them by their throats, lifting them with an effortless motion then he smacked them together onto their own selves before he then threw both of them away to dodge the incoming blur attack. Kid Flash was the blur that had intervened, creating a cyclone around the outer god trying to confuse him by his speed. Niar Lathotep regarded him with sharp, almost anticipatory eyes, like he had watched every movement before it had been made, then from his body, hundreds of small piercing tentacles erupted in every position possible, three of them piercing Wally's legs, forcing him to stutter and fall directly while he screamed in pain. Wally! Screamed Artemis as she released a few explosive arrows at Niar Lathotep. Is this all you humans amount to Earth's resolve and might is so, shallow spoke Niar Lathotep as the smoke from the explosion dissipated. Green Arrow and Black Canary charged in, the couple tried to buy time for Artemis to take away Wally from the battle, the precise shots of Arrow and the sonic scream of Canary combined in one final, desperate bid to find a weakness, but Niar Lathotep was sick of playing with them, he
he didn't even attempt to guard as his hand released a dark beam towards Dinah, she wasn't fast enough to dodge it, but Green Arrow jumped in front of her taking the full blow. Before Niar Lathotep could finish them off, a green barrier covered them, and then another water attack hit him from the side, turning to face it, Aqualad's blades were already at his neck, but they did no damage before he could retaliate, Niar Lathotep was hit with a green hammer, he was surrounded by the three green lanterns and Aqualad. More and more of you keep spoiling my mood, I want a real challenge, not this farce. And so the battle continued, eventually the full might of the Justice League was not enough, all around the battle, heroes such as Green Lantern, Adam and Captain Marvel had all fallen to the battle, a mix of their earlier battle fatigue, and the monstrous strength of Niar Lathotep, made them all fail. As the dust settled, only Superman, Wonder Woman, and Skavik remained standing, albeit bruised and battered. Superman wiped blood from his mouth, determination burning in his eyes. We're not done yet, he growled, launching himself at Niar Lathotep once more. You are the most tenacious, hope is what you represent correct well hope won't amount to muck before he could finish the spear of curses pierced through him, currently the only thing that inflicted a slight tiny bit of pain on him, in anger, Nearlathep turned around hitting Skavik with the force of all his tentacles that had not been used since starting the battle, four of them latched to his back, but before he could continue the attack, his tentacles were wrapped together with a golden lasso. Wonder Woman in the distance, held her ground as he attempted to escape her hold her lasso crackled with divine energy, trying to bind the outer god truly a magnificent item, but I am no god, dear sister, I am beyond that as he said those words, for the first time in history, Wonder Woman's lasso was cut through, the tentacles releasing themselves from it before she could react, Wonder Woman found herself facing the full force of the massive sized tentacles, she dodged, but it was too late. Her right hand was completely cut through, a gush of blood released, as she fell to her knees screaming in agony. Diana! shouted Superman in anger as he closed the distance to defend her from the rest of the tentacles, his two hands caught two of them, but the other two were free, but not for long as Skavik cut one of them using the full force of her noble phantasm GBOLG. Before latching on the other one with her full body, stopping it at its tracks. Ak screamed Niar Lathotep for the first time since the battle started, the only pain that he's truly suffered, was the cut on one of his four tentacles, the problem was, it took a full force noble phantasm, from Skavik, as she and Superman, were only holding on to the other three, retrieving his tentacles Niar Lathotep screamed you are all dead. Pathetic spoke Skavik to which Superman nodded he's like a child that's never felt pain. Let's inflict more, said Skavik. Superman and Skavik nodded at each other, a silent understanding passing between them, they knew, that it was up to them, the only ones remaining, a moment later, they charged at Niar Lathotep from either side, surprisingly synchronized, as if they had been fighting together for years. The first to try was Superman, flying low and very fast. Twin beams of searing energy flared from his eyes, cutting in direct lines into Niar Lathotep's core. The outer god raised a hand, trying to absorb the attack, but before he could do much more than react, Skavik was upon him. She became one with the shadows, swift as one, her form a blur as she darted in with Gibal get the ready, aimed for Niar Lathotep's throat. That spear's enchanted point sheared clean through dark energy enveloping Niar Lathotep to the inky blackness that comprised his form. Niar Lathotep hissed in pain, his form rippling as he staggered back, Superman took advantage of the opportunity, ramming into Niar Lathotep with all he had, that was a shockingly huge blow that would send shockwaves through the battlefield and crack the ground beneath them. But the outer god recovered quickly, his form shifting and twisting as dark tendrils lashed out at both of them, Skavik spun gracefully, her spear cutting through tendrils with fluid, precise motions. Every strike was deliberate to deflect and destroy, but Niar Lathotep's onslaught was relentless. Superman charged in a second time, his fists blurring as he rained punches on Niar Lathotep. He was moving at incomprehensible speed so this is IT. Show me more Kryptonian. Show it all your power all of it. Screamed Niar Lathotep sidestepping one of Superman's punches, the outer god turned and struck the man of steel backhanded across the chest with enough force to send him careening through the air. Skavik didn't waste any time. As Niar Lathotep whirled to meet Superman, she was already on the wing. She flung at the creature with all her might, 
the spear word in a killing trajectory as it bit into the very heart of the creature, but Niarlathotep unnaturally twisted his body, dodging by an inch even if you hit it, I have hundreds of hearts. Ha 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 Niarlathotep swung his clawed hand at Skathik with a smile, but she acrobatically dodged out of the way. Superman recovered and rejoined the fray, charging at Niarlathotep from behind. The attacks of the unlikely duo blended into a deadly rhythm. Raw power, like that which Superman could wield, was coupled with unmatched expertise at the spear, which only Skathic could boast of, a dynamic that would kill most entities in the world, but the outer god was different kind of entity. Skathic darted toward Superman, her spear flashing to deflect a tendril that had been heading into his head. Stay close, she spoke, her voice still calm, even amongst all this chaos. Superman nodded and followed her lead as best he could, moving in sync with her while he trusted in her instincts and experience. Skathic weaved in and out of Niarlathotep's reach, guiding Superman to exploit openings in the outer god's defense. When she struck high, Superman was low, when she went left, he circled right. For the first time, Niarlathotep wasn't able to predict the attacks, his form twisted and writhed in agony as his body strained to keep up the unending barrage, he growled again and sent a wave of dark tentacles from all sides, just like he did with Wally that forced Superman and Skavik back. Niarlathotep's form surged forward, faster than either could react, he struck Skavik first, realizing she was the key, his hand a blur as it connected with her stomach cutting her shallowly as she dodged, but she couldn't dodge his back tentacles, the strong ones, two of them delivered an attack that sent her flying across the battlefield, almost breaking every bone in her upper half. I failed. Thought Skavik as she passed out. Enraged, Superman charged at Niarlathotep with a strong uppercut. The outer god caught the fist in midair with a grin I had a feeling you wouldn't be as smart as that one, you are powerful, but she was the guide, I win Niarlathotep's eyes gleamed with a mocking smile as he increased the pressure, crushing Superman's hand. Grunting again with pain, Superman summoned his strength and broke free of Niarlathotep's hold, he launched a wild, roundhouse type punch at the entity, but Niarlathotep easily dodged it, before returning the favor with three of his strong back tentacles punching Superman to the ground. By the time Superman was staggering around, trying to get his bearings back, when another of the tentacles hit him, then another, and another, but the Man of Steel refused to fall, he was going to fight forever if he had to, to protect his home, Superman clenched his teeth, attempting to find the strength to stand, but his body refused to move. Niarlathotep walked slowly towards his opponent as he spoke Earth's hope has fallen as his hand moved to claw out his heart. But just before that killing blow a brilliant flash of light burst from the sky. Niarlathotep paused, his eyes flicking upward, as the light grew. As a figure dropped down from the heavens, radiating power. Firstborn. Shouted the figure as he delivered a punch so strong it shattered everything behind Niarlathotep as well the ground the mountains and even the distant castle of Bialya were affected. Energy seeped through the figure as his deep voice filled with anger you betrayed me, tried to take away my only chance at recovering my home, you will die today. The smile of Niarlathotep slipped for the first time as he turned to regard the newcomer. Neil Queen, interesting, so you survived. 